Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here on the Audi block again, giving you a video because I can. All right, we're about ready to slide in and put our tool bit in here and start a cut. We've already been running this and moving it back and forth and feeling our bearings, put engaging our feed giving it some time to make sure that the bearings and everything else is kosher okay and bring this out of gear so we can roll this around um, one thing that i did want to point out because we we pulled all of our bearing caps except um, and we're working on number two we're going to start on number two and then we're going to set up on two with this bearing we're going to do number one and we're going to then we're going to swap around again and we're going to go three four five six so this is what we chose to start on is this one here and we're going to be i got the cap off now so that we can do the preliminary setup on the bit and we're going to get to that in a minute but i wanted to show you something because after we got running i had to go ahead and dismantle this and then slide the other sleeve on so i got three bearings one two three and i found that 30 pounds of torque on these leave a good tension on the bar and uh we can we're going to run it at at that torque on the on our bearings we made okay um okay and uh what i what i wanted to show you is that after this bearing had rolled around and and it's a self-centering flange bearing and after it self-lined itself it is so stress free and that, that's what I was shooting for and I, I wanted to show you that I actually obtained that so the alignment and all of that that we went through um, this this bar is just like gliding and floating and that's what we want all right tighten this back down and uh, then we're gonna bring you in close and we're gonna start our first cut Okay, our uh, number two uh, cap, we pulled that off, and we're getting ready. Let's turn on the light here. This kind of helps us down in the bottom down there. Let's see in this area right here. Here's a tool bit. We're going to slide this into the bore, and, and then we're going to move the carriage over here in line with that bore. And we're going to rotate this down. And we're just going to take our Allen and we're just lightly pushing in there. Um, and we want to have a little piece of paper here that'll just give us a little bit of clearance off of that right there. All right, freely. All right. And we should be able to rotate that backwards and it should have clearance all the way around. <laughs> and it does. There was no reason for it not to. All right. So we know we're undersize on the bore. Now we're going to bring our carriage back here and we're going to go ahead and set our other set screw tension here and then we'll be able to bring the butt screw against the bottom of the tool bit and if it yeah, it travels far enough to just barely touch the bottom of that. That's good. That way we know it's not going to push away from it. All right. What is the thickness of our paper? Paper is two thousandths thick. So we know that we're at least two thousandths under that bore. And... All right, that's a good place to start with a cut. 
all right we're going to lock and cinch down our set screws and we're going to mount our cap on here and we're going to try our first cut Making sure we're 100% clean, no grit, no nothing underneath the cap. All right, in the right direction. We give it a shake, and we want we want that to go down in there freely by hand. We don't want to try to draw that down on there. And there we go. Now we're going to torque this to. 60 foot pounds is what uh, we were asked to do. There's a light coat I never sees on these things already. Oh. <laughs> we almost forgot our Kmart, uh, Kmart Auto Japan 263. 12 millimeter. We've had this for a long time. We just had to. We had to laugh. We had, we, we were going through most of my sockets are all six sided, <clears throat> so I had to hunt for a 12 point, and uh, just happened to be that. All right, uh, I'm set for uh, 30 30 pounds of torque on here right now. Yeah, right there. All right, so we'll take it to that first. All right, now we'll increase it to uh, our uh, 60. We just want to make sure that we had a pretty good. Okay, we're sure that those are even and at 60 uh, foot pounds. And our tool bit. All right, we're gonna go ahead and set up. We have a bore scope camera that we wanna put down in there. And we're gonna give you a view of the cut from underneath, which gets to look at the split line really close. All right, we're all set. We're ready to go. We we have our bore scope down in place so we can look at the split line and the cut happening across the split line. We have the Osmos looking down at the tool bit right now at the top. And uh, we have another camera that's just kind of overlooking the whole process here. And we're gonna rotate, we're gonna, we're gonna start a spin here and we're gonna rotate the, uh, the shaft and all right, we're making sure nothing is getting caught. About uh, 133 RPMs, and we're going to be feeding about 3,000s, I think, it, what it is. And I think we're, we're about a sixteenth of an inch away. All right, and we're just going to put a little dab of oil. on each side of our bearing. We're gonna draw it so we get some clearance here. We get the oil underneath the bearing. All right, now we're gonna put a little drop of oil on the other side of the bearing. We're gonna bring the cutter back. Okay, and it's real close now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and engage the feed. Go, here's the first cut. Looking real nice. Looks like it's taking about oh half of that cap thickness there that was overhanging.
feel no vibration or anything. And looking down at the bore uh, camera, it looks like we're all the way through right now. All right, pull it back out. All right, we're going to take a look at it, see what we got. We went down and picked up uh, a pair of brand new feeler gauges, so we had some nice clean feeler gauges, and we can also get it, the variables of measuring with uh, thickness gauges uh, all the way down to one thousandths. Um, this right here is a four thousandths feeler gauge, and let's see if I can get it. I can get four. There we go. I can get four to go underneath. The tool bit or between the tool bit and the lower half of the bore and I rotate this around and I can get it underneath uh, at the bottom and I can also get it over here on this side right here um, I can't get five in there all right so we're gonna bring our tool bit out and we're gonna adjust it out four thousandths and then we're gonna take a, a cut and then we'll probably have to undo all the caps, lift the bar out, and measure that bore. Okay, I've tried a couple different things here to get in. This is probably the closest attempt here of being able to get in. And this is one of those uh, spindle mounts uh, for the indicator on the bridge port. And that would fit right on the bar right there. And then this would come down and clip right here but I have no way of reaching around and and uh, and actually getting enough tension on the clamp to hold it in place and area is just really really too tight to sit there and guarantee a good outcome <clears throat> so I'm gonna take break loose my setup I'm gonna lift the bar out of here I'm gonna put the clamp uh, cap back down. I'm going to torque the cap and we're going to take a, uh, a measurement of the bore itself. We're going to take and hold the bar in the mill vise, set up an indicator and we're going to adjust it and we're going to reassemble it and then we're going to take our second cut. And that way we're guaranteed to know where we're at and what we're taking. We feel confident enough that we can repeat the position of the bar and so that's not in question. All right. That's what, that's what we're going to do. Okay, I pulled the, the cap getting ready to pull the bar out of here and I saw the miscoloration in here which I couldn't quite see clear enough underneath. So this is the side where the bit started and it might have been really sharp and then it mellowed out right here. But I went ahead, took my bit out and uh, honed it and then I gave it a little more radius on the edge and really made sure that I had the support behind the tool bit really secure so that I'm not going to get a chip or anything else. So we're going to give it another go before we actually pull it out and do our final measurement. So I reset this with my paper and then now I'm actually getting three thousandths underneath there. So we're we're going to put the cap back on and we're going to take that cut over again and we're going to see if we come out with a clean finish across here. Alright, I can feel a slight difference in the bore right there okay the the shiny area is higher than this area right here and it went in there just like that so that rough surface was the beginning of the cut going in and then it decided to uh, uh, chip or whatever it was then we're starting to get a really nice finish right there so I just broadened the radius on the end of the bit and made it a little stouter and then honed it out. 
honing a, a, a carbide bit is using this is a uh, carbide stone and there are different grades of stone but on carbide it's a little bit softer it almost looks like powder coming off of there but you kind of roll it around on there and you can see it you're just lifting a little bit off of there and you're just taking that that scratchy burr off of there making sure that it's crisp and clean all right that's honing a tool bit here we go Sounds pretty good. From this angle, it looks like it's a nice finish right off the bat. Okay, it's picking up that other thickness there, it sounded like. Still looking good at the finish. Excellent. Okay, now let's pull it apart and uh, mic the bore. Look at that, high speed steel takes the dog. <laughs> Damn. Woohoo! We pulled our bar out, it's over there in the bridge port so we can adjust the tool bit. And while it's out, we can actually get the proper measurement on our bore. And we figured this is what we're going to have to do for each bore is to get in there. And after we take a skim cut, we're going to have to find out what the diameter is and then adjust a tool bit to bring it out to finished size. All right, this is 2 inches uh, 474. And our finish size that we want is uh, 2 inches 478 to 2 inches 479. So our, our reading and setting that uh about three or four thousandths off of the wall um it jives with how much we got left on this piece here in this bore measurement off the bottom all right let's go over and set our tool bit <laughs> we started out with that tool bit there and then we went through and we found uh, a great dead handles uh, impact and we tried that and it 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 failed in there as well and finally we took a piece of uh, high speed we had several of them there this is actually an old uh, bridgeport uh, high speed we have a lot of uh, um, different old stuff that 
we hang on to time to time. This is good quality stuff. All right. Now this bit here was uh, a little bit longer, and I actually took the cutoff saw. This is a piece of high-speed steel. I don't know what grade it actually is, but I know it's an oldie, and it had uh, an etching on the side of it there, and it was some part number for something, sometime or another. And uh, I figured it was a good piece of, to make it. So I went ahead and created a good grind that I thought would be able to attack that missing diameter that it kept crapping out. It, it kept going about halfway through that um, cap and you can see that the cap itself here on the on the mill table and uh, You can see the first line where it crapped out and so I came in what three other cuts and it's got glossy on it But it still failed and finally it, it made its way over about halfway into the cap and then uh, Kept failing till I put this one piece of high speed in here and this edge looks really good I get uh, the magnifying glass on it and all of that so what we're going to do is we're going to keep that bit right in there. It's still plenty sharp. I don't see any damage on the tip. It, I can see where it took the coloration off from when I sharpened it. I can see where it took that off, but there's n n no flaws on that edge right there. All right, so we're going to put it down here. We're going to take our little mini, one of the little mini Noga, and uh, there's a real nice Mitch Toyo dial that... Just fits on here right. I've been using this over on the uh, the little lathe, my Rutland. Okay, with the luck we've been having, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure the the butt screw is okay. The butt screw is in there and tight. Now I'm just gonna break this loose, and I'm gonna play this safe. Um, because of the luck we've been having, I just want to make sure that the high-speed steel is doing its job. I'm going to go three of the four. And if we have to come back and we have to take the last thousands, then, then that would be great. If it takes the three and leaves us a really good finish, <clears throat> that's going to be great. But then we can take... This looks good, and then it mics up, and we only need a half a thousandth to finish it. Then, then we'll we'll be doing that as well. So there we go. This is, this will be a three thousandths cut. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of of cutting oil because I did put a little bit on there, and I just want to make sure that. We got every <laughs> we got every positive action going on for us here. Okay, here we go. Sounds good. Looks good. It's holding in there. It's not giving out yet. Knock on wood, I said that. Excellent.
It still looks good. All right, let's pull our uh, rig out of there and uh, let's get a look at that cap and our diameter. All right, we just pulled the uh, we just pulled the cap and that's the complete cut all the way across there. It looks really nice. I mean, of course, there's going to be a home that's going through here and it'll kind of finish up any diameter discrepancies, but uh, a nice smooth finish. And, all right, let's uh, see what it's going to measure up to. Okay, we just snapped this. We got a really nice number here, but we're going to snap it again. As always, it doesn't hurt you to... Actually, I like, I like to pull on the uh, small one and draw the big one here, meaning the ends on the uh, snap gauges here. All right, and give us a good snug, get uh, lined up, okay, and draw her through. All right. Or four, uh, two inches, four seventy seven. So seventy eight or seventy nine is our mark. We can feel just a little bit on each side here. I'm going to take that next thousandth. So we'll jack a thousandth in our bar. Okay. Loosen it up. You can hear Billy out there outside. He's needle gunning and wire wheeling. Okay, it almost. <clears throat> yeah. That looks like about one and one tenth there. I want a good one, but let's make it just one. Okay, I want to go just a little bit in on that. All right, we're going to settle for that. All right, let's go put it in, take a cut. Should be our final cut. Okay, here we go. We're getting ready for the final cut here. And coming in. I know I put some cutting oil on it last time. I think I'm gonna let it go. We just got a thousandth there. I got a good view of the split line there. Here we go. And I can feel it touching. I can see it. That's nice. We're taking a thou off of the top half and we're not touching the bottom half at all. And we're at the right measurement or coming up on the right measurement. Keep our fingers crossed. Huh, a chip landed on the lens. At least it's not in the right, or in, I shouldn't speak so soon there, huh? Maybe if I have a little air here, we can blow it off. There we go. Oh, earbuds, by the way. There we go. Okay, looks like we're going to be on to the next journal. But we're going to measure this one up. And we'll see where we're at. Looks good. All right, let's see what we got here. And flip this over again.
All right, and I'm getting two inches, four seventy-eight, maybe maybe a tenth. Excellent. And we didn't make a single mark on the lower bore. I can feel a frog hair on each side. That's excellent. This is going to be a good, uh, that, if I can do them all just like that, it's going to be an excellent candidate to run the hone through and keep the stock size. Awesome. Alright, we just pulled our bar and we are on the last bearing. We, we decided to do the thrust. Number four is the, is the thrust. main bearing and that completes the set of bores now we were able to bore out every one of these new caps without touching nicking or scoring any of the original bores and come out to within within a tenth this one here happens to be uh, uh, two inches four seventy eight and a tenth or two and the rest of them are like right on on uh, or closer to the uh, Two inches four seventy eight All right, there's only one thing left to do To this and it's a thrust bearing. I'm gonna bring you in here closer so that you can you can see and We'll be talking about the chamfer that's on the bore that's not per, not um, not enough to match the original block. So we're going to go ahead and make the chamfer that's on here a little bit larger and make it match what's on the block. Okay, I brought you in a little closer so you can see this is the chamfer we're talking about on the side of the uh, bore. And the cap has barely any. And I'm going to just hang down the original cap and you can see right there the same amount of chamfer as right here. It was probably bored or machined at the same time uh, with the original caps in there. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to put a 45 degree tool bit, a uh, piece of high speed steel, and we're going to kiss this upper cap on both sides till we have pretty close to that chamfer right there. And then they'll be nice and clearance and uh, the, the the bearing insert uh, will be able to fit in there a lot easier, a lot better, and then have the same clearance all the way around uh, on the support. Alright, we're going to pull this bearing cap off of here. And we're going to drop our bar in here for the very last time. Now we'll be able to put our tool bit in, cut one side, then pull our tool bit out, pass the bar through to the other side, and then set it up on, on the other side as well. Put the tool bit back in. We have the tool bit shaped already. There we go. Um... Every time is an inspection, making sure that you put clean surfaces together. And I found just laying the first bearing into the journal, then with it angled, I can position the second one and the third one there. Get it in there, snap them into place. There we go. All right, then we just add the journals. This is a practice that <laughs> well, let's just say I've been practicing. Now on this thrust cap, 
I've got a pair of really nice uh, footed vice grips here and reach overs or whatever way you want to call it and I get down there on the outside split line and I can give it just a, a little light squeeze and I can feel those faces really line up parallel now until this thing is actually assembled and with the crank and when you drop that in there it, it aligns the top shell but it, with nothing in there there's nothing to align this shell so I have to position it myself so I'm feeling on each side and I actually got a really good feel on here I took and I dimensionally because at first I thought well hey there's there's a side over here sticking out but it's just the sharp corner and the face is not sticking out I measured the the diameter or the width of that that flange section in the middle and it's it's equal it's all the way around I haven't found out it found any discrepancies on on that at all so it's just how it sets in here that gives you that feel all right now we can go ahead and torque this down um, okay Yeah, I like that. All right. All right, now we're going to, our mains that hold the bar, um, we set that at 30. Okay, nice and firm. Okay, we're gonna rotate it around. We put in our bar drive here first. Okay, we're now ready to set up our tool bit. Okay, I set up a mirror right here, and you got a mirror view of this position right here, right there. <laughs> Try to do that looking in the mirror. Uh, all right, so anyway, you got a, a, a view of looking right at that point there. And uh, so let's fire it up and we'll see, uh, see if we can keep this in focus here before we get cutting. All right, it's looking pretty good. Let's bring the cutter over here. I'm just trying to do this gingerly here. There we are, we're just barely touching. I 
I'm just bringing a little more torque on my bearings here. And I'm going to hold a little resistance on my bar. You can start to see a flat on that. Alright, I think I'm going to live with that without having as much chatter. There we go. Take a look at it. I might actually slow this down see if I can get a little bit more. I don't know. It is pretty, pretty nice looking. Looking right at that corner right there. Uh, looks like I could go just a smidgen more. See if I can uh, slow down my speed and maybe uh, get a better cut here. I'm just gonna come over close here too. Okay. Um, take a brush and let's look at that bit. That uh, bit still looks good. Yeah. Okay. I'm just reaching in here and torquing down just a little bit uh, more on the bearing there. Okay, that's all I dare push it, and it looks pretty good. I, I like that. All right, cool. We got this in that lower speed because I think it worked out a little better. We do have our cutting oil on hand in case we need it. And I'm just bumping the lathe on over to... Alright, we're just starting to touch.
I'm gonna get a light on that and look at it. It looks pretty darn good to me from back here. And where's my flashlight? There it is. Okay, I gotta rub it with my fingers here and get a look at it from an angle here. Looks pretty close to what I have on the other side. It's a little lighter than the original, but I'd rather stay away from that and just making sure that it has a little bit. That's pretty good. Maybe just a skosh more. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil here. Okay. Now that feels about like I have on the other side. That feels good. All right, let's let her be. All right, awesome. I get to paint the last one. Take some sharpum and I paint in the little arrow on the uh, on the top, and that was my way of uh, marking each one of them uh, done, completed, and my little mark on it all right time to pull the bar apart clean the block up here and uh, put the, all the main caps in here get a good picture of it and we'll call the guys over at Doll Cape uh, Automotive Machine Shop there and uh, let them know that um, it's ready for them to take on over and continue on with this project all right, we finished up on our bore there, and uh, we're getting ready to lower this down into a bag so we can take it back to uh, All Cape Machine there tomorrow. Um, and I have a couple things that I wanted to go share with you. Um, one is the the other night uh, I got an email, and uh, it says, uh, "Hello, Keith. Nice videos you made uh, about boring the Audi block." If you need any additional information about the caps themselves, please let me know. I'll be happy to share. Best regards, Kenneth Eckert, uh, Kenex Manif Machining Ltd, Finland, Europe. And uh, what a surprise that! Uh, and hey, it's it's a small world sometimes, I guess. Um, so I went ahead and and while I was playing around with this uh, last night and this morning. I uh, I emailed them this morning and I just said, hey, you know, I'm kind of curious on um, the the alloy uh, of material metal and the hardness and, and all of that. And he gave me pretty much all of the uh, specifics on there. And I'm going to put it into the uh, introduction on the video there. Uh, so he's got the tool locks 33 and uh, the hardness, uh, uh, the yield, strength, tensile, elongation, impact, and all that comes into the machining parameters and basically uh, uh, feet per minute uh, 492 656 the feed rate uh, minimum and max um, insert grade p25 p25 is pretty much the the basics as what I had to see six um, that uh, whoop yeah c6 and and I was in that ballpark range of what it what was required to machine it but the bar and the way the interrupted cut came and acted with the bar and probably the U joint and universals kind of played a, a little bit of, as well that <laughs> that number 2 cap our very first one we started on that that was nerving until I finally Swapped over to a VR75, 
which was a higher impact carbide and that took it about halfway through there was a raised bore i was i was playing around with uh, trying to just get the material and it was failing so when a bit fails and it chips and breaks away um that you leave more material so i just kept on going through until i was picking up and then had a safe safe cut you saw that and uh it, it came right down to just stopping going up sharpening high speed bit and uh making that go uh the other thing uh put it up here in the comments um there was one comment and he wanted a little more exp explanation on why i offset that tool bit in the bar and we got a split line going across here and just you know that is equal of the bore or center line of the bore and uh, i'm going to bring you in a little closer so you can actually see this okay i'm going to hold this bit with one of my favorite 70s tool so i can get it in here like this all right now this is center line and here's a tool bit mounted in the bar this would be exactly on center with the cutting edge if the tool bit was exactly on center that center line would be center of the tool bit itself here i took and offset it one hundred thousandths which is th this is five sixteenths so uh, it would have been 530 seconds. It would be halfway. So I just wanted to have it so that it was close to center line, but above it. The reason why that, if you're coming around and then you dull out, um, it, it will want to like push away from the bar. It'll be more forgiving and not digging in. If you actually have a catch or an interrupted cut and you you actually put downward force and there's any flex the more this goes down the more it digs into the material i'm gonna I'm, I'm just lowering you down here so that you can see the extreme that it is also if you're at center line or below center line you're working there you have to have more concern for your clearance and everything else behind here a little bit above center line this clearance grows on its own see so kind of my happy medium where I like to have just a little safety factor meaning above it and um, so that the pressure itself doesn't bring it down into a positive or a digging mode. It, it actually will come away from the bore itself if there's any mishap. So that's my reasoning and where, where I put the, the actual insert. Now, sometimes if you have a rigid enough setup, you can work center line all day long. But as soon as you get dull, um, it, you're, you're going to have forces on there that are going to cause a little more havoc than having it slightly above. Okay, uh, another, another um, comment in there was, hey, are you still doing the number 40 tapers? And I just want you to know that I haven't done a video or I haven't completed these without doing a video. Um, but I, I have taken some time and we rebuilt my wood stove in here. And it's, uh, it's running right now with our doors wide open, keeping the moisture out of here. But it's almost ready to rock and roll and be able to do the heat treat. Doesn't mean I need to do some more um, uh, whittling away on these and we'll do a little bit of that. Then we're going to heat treat them and then I'm going to get into grinding them. So they're not left out, they're not left behind and you're, you're not missing anything. Okay, the, uh, the one other thing I wanted to talk about was, um, we all know that uh, because I can, the video was uh, named that, and that's basically, this is a job. It was obvious that I'm not making, uh, I'm not making a living doing this kind of a job. And this was basically a personal challenge and a share for you. Um, you know, it's been... A little slow down on my videos but it's because the slowdown of work coming in and choice videos that I have to share I love sharing something that takes the out-of-the-box thinking and and just really brings it alive and that's uh, that's I I love creating that kind of a video um, so if you like to help keep up the motivation on this kind of a video 
on my website there at the uh, upper right hand corner some sponsorship uh, link there and uh, throw in a little bit of a sponsorship there and I greatly appreciate it all right all right I'm I'm uh, I'm ready to get this in a bag and uh, till the next time get it done <laughs>